Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum. 2500 is not going down without a fight. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we discussed this idea that 2500 is a fairly significant milestone in the same way that 1400 was, which was around the prior all time high, rounded to the closest $100. Also $2,000 was a significant milestone. And if you look at $2,000, we approached it, we got rejected, we consolidated for a month and a half or so before ultimately breaking through it. And the same way we said, hey, I don't think I don't think 2100 will be significant. I don't think 2200, 2300, 2400 will be significant. But I do think that breaking through $2500 and going on up to 26, 2700 will be a lot harder for Ethereum to do just because people get these major milestones in their head and people might take profits at those levels, okay? So we look at this and we say, "Hey, you know, in the grand scheme of the market cycle, we knew that $1,400 would be a pretty big milestone, and it was, okay? I mean, it wasn't as big as 2K, but you can see that we had a weekly candle up to 1260 with a wick close to $1,400, we got rejected. And then we had another week, we went all the way back down to 923. Let's take a measured move on that rejection. A modest 31% drop. It wasn't till Jan the week of January 18th where we even had a wick significantly above $1,400, and then the following week we came right back down. The following week, we still had prices less than $1,400. So it can take a while, or we know that. It can take a while to, to, to break these major milestones. Again, with 2K, it took a while. Remember, this is a, a journey. It's a, it's a long journey. And occasionally, occasionally, we'll do these things where we'll go, we'll go up and then sideways, okay? We'll go up and sideways, and up and sideways, and then up and sideways, and occasionally, we might drop back down. And Ethereum might say to hell with it, we're going back down, we're gonna test the 20 week for a while. We test it, we go back up, and then up and then sideways, and then up and sideways, up and sideways. And occasionally, we may go back down, okay? We may go back down. But it doesn't mean that we're on any other track than the track we've been on, okay? I mean, it, I mean you can still see we're on the same, the same general path, nothing has really changed. And if we if we draw some some lines in the sand here, you know, we're still we're still looking relatively good. Okay, we're still looking relatively good in the grand scheme of, of where we're headed. If we just sort of draw a line between the data, okay, and we're not drawing our 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 you know our fake support or, or resistance or anything like that. We're just sort of drawing a line between the data, looking at, at where the price has generally been moving around, and recognizing that hey, I mean things still look relatively good and we recognize that things aren't going to move up monotonically over the entire market cycle we will have times where it cools off some people will capitulate probably the people that bought the local tops will then be the same people that capitulate down here but at the end of the day if you're in this in the grand scheme of the market cycle nothing has changed right nothing has changed and and so one of the things we should take a look at is is always recognizing where the downside risk is and i know i sound like a broken record when i talk about the downside risk but there's always new people coming to the channel and they should be aware that there is downside risk even in a bull market right we could we could go to these price levels and still maintain a relative a relative feeling of being bullish despite the fact that from here it could seem relatively bearish okay so that would be a drop of still about 30% and we could still feel relatively bullish in the grand scheme of the cycle. Imagine, imagine the price of Ethereum were to drop back down to these levels, which by the way, the 20 week SMA today is at a modest 1527, the 21 week EMA is at 1561. I know that might feel bearish and we're certainly not saying we're gonna go there and remember these weekly moving averages are moving up every single week. But if we did go there and we held the line just like we did sort of over here, just like we held it over here, you see how quickly sentiment can change, right? And you can come right back up 
and you can continue along your journey. So no one in this space, I guarantee you there's not a single YouTube out there that can tell you exactly what's going to happen and when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. It's more so important that you recognize where we are in the, in the market cycle. We don't know exactly where we're gonna go in the short term, but our long-term outlook has not changed, right? It has not changed. And, and we recognize, hey, there always is downside risk with Ethereum, okay? And it's slightly more than Bitcoin, but we expect slightly higher returns with Ethereum and maybe not just slightly. And we've already seen slightly higher returns with Ethereum, okay? I mean, if you take a measured move from the bottom of the candles, we're not even gonna go to the bottom of the wick. If you just go to the bottom of the candles to the current day, Ethereum is up a modest 1,719%. If you go look at Bitcoin over the same time period, and see how far it's up. Well, we're gonna we'll take that we'll take that same move as well. So we're gonna go from the bottom of the candle up to where we currently are, and it's up a modest 950 percent. So we know that Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin. We know this, but at the same time, we have to pay our respects to Bitcoin. Why do we have to pay our respects to Bitcoin? Because this type of analysis isn't exactly the most fair when you're coming at it from a Bitcoin perspective. Because you're saying you're probably looking at yourself like saying. Well, if you're Bitcoin, you're probably saying, well, you know, hold up a second. You're punishing Bitcoin for not bleeding as much as Ethereum. Okay, from that point to this capitulation at the bottom of the candle, Bitcoin was only down a modest 72%. Compared to Ethereum, Ethereum was down from the bot from the tops of the candles down to this down to this level, it was down 91%. So I, I think the people that that only that cherry pick either way right we don't want to cherry pick either way you're not doing yourself any favors okay we recognize that that bitcoin had less downside that's why i think everyone should have bitcoin in their portfolio right and i think they should have more bitcoin than ethereum it's not financial advice but i think that they should have more bitcoin than ethereum because bitcoin has less downside risk okay but then when you get to the pits of the bear market Yes, buying Bitcoin is great because we know that Bitcoin will stand the test of time, or at least if any cryptocurrency is going to, it would be Bitcoin more than likely. You still have that upside potential for other cryptocurrencies from those bear market bottoms. And we say, hey, yeah, we know that Bitcoin didn't bleed as bad as Ethereum. Ethereum has performed better from market cycle bottom. But if we continue to show the entire picture and not cherry pick any given any given time period, we can also say, well, if you measure it from top to current prices, Ethereum's only up 62% compared to Bitcoin, 187%. Okay, so we have to recognize that each of these different assets, they, 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 they provide a different uh, perspective for, for your portfolio, okay? So Ethereum can give you more upside potential However, we also realize you're taking on more risk because in the bear market, you're gonna have more risk. You're gonna have less risk with Bitcoin than you would with Ethereum. And we know that. But then in the bull market, and when you get to those market cycle bottoms, you have more upside potential for Ethereum. So we don't need to play the game necessarily of, hey, like we're, you know, Ethereum's always gonna perform better than Bitcoin because it's not. And we know there will come a day when we will have some downside risk and the Ethereum bleed will be slightly more than Bitcoin's. We know that, we expect it, and we can look and as measured from top to top and say, well, Bitcoin's doing better so far. So for anyone who was just buying crypto back over here at this top, they would have been better off buying Bitcoin than buying Ethereum so far. That doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. And I do think Ethereum will, will wow us whenever the end of the market cycle is, but that could still be a long time from now. And until then, if you stretch this out, and I mean, I'm gonna stretch it out so I can tell the story that I wanna tell. I mean, it, it just looks like a slow, relatively slow, methodical move up over a long period of time. And if we go look at the last cycle, what did we notice? What did we notice? Well, we had, we sort of had two major moves and you could argue three. So we had one and then down and then two and then down and then three and then really far down, okay? And during that last cycle, Ethereum held the bull market support band, which was the 20 week SMA and the 21 week EMA over here, and it held it over here. And then we broke it there, and then that was the end of the bull market. There was one time where it broke down below it here, and it did represent a fairly significant opportunity for those that felt like they missed out on the Ethereum boat. And I mean, if it doesn't look like much from the top of the wick down to the bottom of this wick, that was a 72% drop. So, the downside risk last cycle was a lot higher so far than it is this cycle, but why is that, right? Why is that? Well, it's the same thing we've been saying all along. 
we do not expect the same ROI this market cycle as last market cycle. It just simply is not going to happen. We will have diminishing returns. And if you look at the slope or the angle of attack of the prior cycle, and we compare it to where we currently are today, as measured from market cycle bottom, you can see we're nowhere keeping pace with it. Even if you shift this over to, to March, you know we, we were not able to keep pace with it, March of 2020. So we look at this and we say, hey, yeah, there might not be as nearly there might not be nearly as much downside risk. Like we might not see 70 or 80 percent drop. I mean, we saw a 70 percent drop right here, 74 percent. Even if you go to this area and go down, that was like a 50 something percent drop. If you go from here down back to the 20 week SMA, that was like another 70, about almost 70 percent drop. So yeah, we might not experience the same type of 70% drops during the bull market as we did last market cycle. And for those that are curious, a 70% drop from the local top would put us at around 750, okay? To give you an idea of, of the potential downside we had last market cycle. But the nice thing about diminishing volatility is it, it not only works to the upside, it also works to the downside. So yes, we had some downside volatility that would turn a lot of stomachs that are of people that are getting into the market today last cycle, but the upside potential was a lot higher. As you can see, when you just overlay the sub cycle ROI from say the local bottom. So even if you, even if you overlay the next one and we color code this a, a different color so we can, so that it stands out, you know, both of these had better ROIs in the short term last cycle than Ethereum this cycle. So diminishing returns, right? It takes a lot more volume to move the asset when the market capitalization is so much higher. Back over here, the market capitalization was in the tens of millions over here, okay? And now it's, it's, well, over, it's well over 200 billion. So we know that it's going to take a lot more volume to move Ethereum in the, current, in the current market conditions, all right? So then we say, well, where are we today? Well, the downside risk, as always, in a bull market, at the very least, is the bull market support band, which from the current local top, it would be about a 40% drop if we were to go there today. But remember, this is a moving target, and it's moving up each and every day. Back in September, the bull market support band was around $300, and today, it's closer to around $1,500. So in that sense, time is on our side. But we also don't want to get too far carried away with it, because we do realize that, hey, even in a bull market, for Ethereum, not for Bitcoin that we've seen, unless you go back to 2013 and realize that, hey, well, even in a bull market, Bitcoin was able to go below the 20-week moving average. But that was also more representative of a double peak cycle here. And we actually had weekly closes below it, which is somewhat similar to what Ethereum had last cycle and say of a double peak cycle, right? I mean, it, it, it's somewhat similar, a double peak cycle. It's not exactly the same. And then it also wasn't able to hold the bull market support band at one point. So we go to today and say, well, hey, Bitcoin sort of looks like a, a double peak cycle. Um, and one thing I've, I've thought about, and we'll probably make a dedicated video on this too. One thing I have thought about is, you know, Bitcoin could be doing, and we've talked about this, obviously, Bitcoin could be having a double peak cycle. But what if Ethereum is, is doing what Bitcoin did the following cycle after its double peak cycle? Okay, so I mean, Ethereum, if you look at it, if you look at it today, and we say, well, okay, last cycle, it seemed to sort of have a double peak cycle. And then so far, it's been a more slower and methodical move up, right? I mean, just sort of going up like this. And then you go look at Bitcoin and you say, well, look, it had a double peak cycle. And then what happened after it? It had a more methodical move up over a long period of time. What if Ethereum just does the same thing where it's like one market cycle behind Bitcoin. And instead of instead of having these double peak cycles like Bitcoin, where it goes up 3x higher, higher than the all time high, what if it's more just a slower methodical move up? We test the 20 weeks sometimes, we keep going up and we test the 20 week and we keep going up. And, and so we, we want to at least say that that is a possibility because we're going in the idea that, okay, well, it could be a double peak cycle just like a just like Bitcoin was the cycle before in 2013, and then it had a more methodical move up the following cycle. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we go look at the Ether Bitcoin valuation, and we say, well, hey, you know, I mean, we, we know that to go back to the top of the channel, it can take upwards of half a year, and we're nowhere close to half a year at this point, and so we don't necessarily think that it has to go there immediately, but if it did, say, take 180 days or something, uh, you know, we'd be looking at the at the summertime, okay? And whether that means it goes up like this or it comes down first and then goes up, kind of like it did here and here and here, okay? So we had a move up, down, midway point, and down. Up, down, midway point, and down, right? Up, down, so up, down, midway point, down, and then back up. 
and then we're saying okay so up down midway point you know if it goes back down is that the worst thing in the world i don't think so i don't think so what would what would likely cause something like that happen well i mean bitcoin going into price discovery recovery mode would be one however bitcoin isn't necessarily showing i mean so far every time it's gone back in price discovery it's only been going up a couple thousand dollars or three thousand dollars or so so it hasn't really been and even when it does go back into price discovery because the price discovery is fairly limited in its scope because it's fairly short-lived the dominance hasn't really been going anywhere other than down other than down okay so the more likely way that you see the Ethereum valuation come back down against Bitcoin, if it is unable to go up to the local top or to the up top part of this channel in the short term, which it could, right? It could. If it's not able to, it probably because Bitcoin's correcting, right? It probably because Bitcoin's correcting in that sense. And then maybe it goes back down to valuation of 0.03 as opposed to 0.04. And, and so that would sort of just be kicking the can down the road. Maybe you regroup again and then go up in the summertime if we don't go up immediately and then if we do go back up in the summertime then we probably would have a repeat of last summer where you go back up maybe you spend some time up here and then you have that typical q4 bleed that no one wants to be a part of and then and then you just rinse and repeat and then you zoom out and we say hey we've been on the same we've been on the same trend we've been on for the last year and a half nothing has changed it's the same thing okay and then go look at the log scale. And I mean, you could argue that I should shift this line. I don't really shift it that often, but maybe we should shift it down a little bit to to a little, you know, to, to encapsulate these moves a little, uh, a little bit better. This is all a logarithmic scale, and just recognizing that you know we might not go immediately to the top, but if we do, we'll, we'll sure as hell be ready for it. Um, I mean, that would be a valuation of 0.05, which again is 1 20th the price of a Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin's currently at, at $55,000, we know one tenth of that would be $5,500. So, you know, I mean, uh, one twentieth would be around twenty-seven fifty. So if Bitcoin were to stay constant and the price were to stay invariant and the valuation of Ethereum went back up to 0.05, then it would correspond to a twenty-seven fifty dollar Ethereum. So, so basically what I'm looking at is, okay, if we go up there in the short term and Bitcoin stays relatively constant, we could be looking at, at slightly less than a $3,000 Ethereum just to get to 0.05. If we if, if Bitcoin capitulates for a while, the Ethereum valuation is Bitcoin comes back down and then we go up later in the year, then hopefully hopefully we can even go higher at that point. And maybe we'll be looking at valuations of 0.06 rather than 0.05. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's go for 320,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. We also have the premium list. You can find a link to that in the description below at intothecryptoverse.com. You will get access to weekly reports, weekly videos, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, the Into the Cryptoverse app, premium only live streams, uh, and more. We have an NFT coming soon, probably in the next week or two is when I'm gonna be doing the snapshot for that. So if you wanna make sure you get that, make sure you sign up to the premium list before then. Um, and then at the very least, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to turn on your notifications and like the video. Thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you next time. Bye.